Hello and welcome to this repair overview tutorial and today we're going to look at a Marantz PM4001 amplifier. This unit was made available approximately 2005 and after that date Marantz also introduced a SE version or special edition version but for this repair we're just focusing on the non-special edition. So general specifications, power output RMS into 8 ohm speaker loads is 40 watts per channel and then that increases to 55 watts per channel if you connect 4 ohm speakers and then total harmonic distortion is 0.01% over a frequency range of 40 Hz to 20 kHz and you do have the ability to have two sets of speakers connected so when I say dual speaker selection you can select a remote set from the front fascia Input sensitivity, because you can have a direct connection from a turntable into a phono stage, millivoltage is standard at 2.5 millivolts. And then for all of the other inputs, you're looking at a line input of 170 millivolts. And as is common with all of these types of amplifiers, you do have for personal listening, headphone socket, and this is a quarter inch jack. And if you wish to defeat the tone control circuit, so no longer requirement for the bass and treble controls, you can just hit the tone defeat. You also have on this amplifier what we call a record out selector which is kind of nice that maybe you have a input coming on to one of the other channels and you can just use the record out selector then maybe if you want to record or, or put that onto some form of tape player. More common back then, uh, probably less so now but still a nice feature overall and as with all Marantz amplifiers you always see this loudness switch on this series of amplifier and then overall dimensions, you're looking at 117 millimeters high by 440 millimeters with is the width and with a depth of 341. And weight is coming in at 6.6 .6 kilograms. Now this amplifier, of course, can be controlled via the front fascia, but it also supported the remote control function as well. And what Marantz did was they really had two types of remote control, the one from the original when the amplifier was released and then there's also a service bulletin which refers to a ladder remote control which was more common across the entire series then. So first off when the amplifier came into the workshop really the note was that there was no power up, there's no indication of power up and then what I show in the video is just with the top cover removed and the first thing that sort of strikes you is the amount of dust which is layering the entire circuit board. The good news is this was just simply removed you know with a long bristle brush and then just a small amount of compressed air it hadn't been in a damp environment so that dust wasn't sort of stuck onto the board and no sort of greasiness or stickiness to that so easy enough to do and then what i'm showing next is an extract from the service manual um, what i'm pointing to here is a particular voltage regulator now you'll also see this in the video i take a photograph of the startup board and on that startup board is a transformer and then you'll then see this regulator which is providing a 5.6 volt power supply over to the microcontroller which is mounted on the front board stroke tone control board. Now because you had no indication of power up you do have a conventional switch so when you push that from or push button on the front it's like a or, or a plastic sort of lever which goes back then to a mechanical or electromechanical type switch. So as soon as you initiate that, what will happen then is the power comes in, it then initializes providing the fuse is not blown, which it wasn't in this case, to the um, startup transformer. And then after that is then rectified and smoothed, it then goes directly into IC96. Now IC96 as it's shown here is an MC7805C so what that 7805C indicates is that it is a 5 volt regulator or 5 volt series regulator so really a kind of easy repair not difficult what I'm simply doing there is I just verify that you have the incoming supply on pin 1 with reference to ground if you want to use a ground connection then what you can then do is you can then use um, the rear speaker terminal so just connect your common ground to there now what's interesting is because it's a 7805 you may say well where do they get in the additional 0.6 of a volt and what they do if you look at pin 2 you can see that they've used a diode and then that's effectively lifting that up from a direct ground connection so giving you that extra 5.6 volts 
and then the output from a regulator will be 5.6 volts not in this case it was down to a couple of millivolts but the regulator wasn't running warm so that told me that he hadn't sort of wasn't anything pulling excess current and it was a straightforward task then of just simply replacing the 7805 to restore back normal operation for myself as an engineer when I look at this circuit I'm, I'm never a great fan of, of this this sort of you know jack it, jacking up the negative line on pin 2 of the regulator I know I've seen other Marantz amplifiers and they use a common design where the regulator has gone short circuit and then what you've then got is excess voltage then coming through which has, has destroyed the microcontroller there is no other additional protection circuit at all then so you kind of belt and braces on everything um, we know that these amplifiers you know those boards are not going to be available microcontroller will not be available so you know in some cases it sort of remit or renders the uh, amplifier then beyond economical repair what's interesting from this schematic as well you can see the startup relay which is RY92 which is energized then from the signal on the power on and then once that's energized via the protection fuse it applies power then to the primary of the power transformer which would then provide the secondary voltages the next part that I want to sort of draw your attention to as well is that it is not uncommon for manufacturers to issue service bulletins or technical bulletins to the field and what I'm showing here is going back to a technical bulletin which was released so what happens here is any authorized dealers stroke repair service agents for Marantz at that time period would have been issued with this service bulletin and the service bulletin has been produced because the factory or Marantz would have identified that they were seeing a number of failures of the large power transformer and inside of there is a thermal fuse and if the transformer overheats normally due to excess current or maybe shorted windings it would then operate the thermal fuse it goes open circuit and the primary is, is, is open so no longer will current flow but what they identified and what I'm pointing to here there are three ceramic disc capacitors which are 100 nanofarad and these ceramic disc capacitors are connected directly across the bridge rectifier on as you can see here and the problem is and what they've identified that if they have a voltage spike those 50 volt capacitors normally go short circuit and as soon as that happens it's not going to blow the protection fuse on the input of the mains it will draw excess current on the transformer and then the transformer will fail so part of this service note is to replace C901, 902 and C903 you keep the same value and 100 nanofarads is very common for high frequency suppression capacitors or noise reduction capacitors but what they've done is they've upgraded that then to 100 volts and then that prevents this premature failure of those capacitors leading to a short circuit and the destruction then of the transformer so as part of this repair and I always sort of keep on mentioning this about adding some longevity to it what I've done is I've carried out the work for or related to that service bulletin and then the other sort of work that you have to do which is very common you know you just do this visual inspection of the circuit board and what I'm checking for of course are any dry joints and you do find them on some of the RCA connectors you know you just see that sort of break around there and that graying effect and then also on the power regulator components as well with reference to the field service bulletin as well um, what you'll see is it's referencing then to the serial number and what that serial number as you see here relates to which amplifiers are affected and then which amplifiers after a specific date code are no longer affected so the reason why I show you the rear of the amplifier in this case is you can see that this is one of the amplifiers with a date code where the capacitors had to be replaced then and then in terms of alignment for this amplifier um, you know I didn't have to make any alignment but just for your own sort of reference if you do need to do that then the bias settings on this amplifier are relatively low in comparison to some of the other Marantz amplifiers you know you're not sort of up at the 10 to 20 millivolt area for the 4001 you will set via uh, the test connectors 
to a millivoltage across the emitter resistors of five millivolts and then that's you know that's quite normal and then once the regulator is replaced you know checking the dry joints reassembly then it's only a, a simple matter then of a full functional test and sure enough the amplifier was left on test for a number of uh, hours and performed fault free and uh, all was good all right so that sort of brings us to the end of this overview tutorial again not a complex repair but as always i do appreciate you stopping by listening and taking the time and i look forward then to you uh, listening to uh, another repair view uh, video so thanks very much until the next time cheers bye bye